Hello there and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela Porter. I'm an artist. I'm very much inspired by nature, by architecture, by pattern, by abstracting things from all of this, as well as very stylized and whimsical art. And um, I try to combine these things in a way that I find pleasing. Zentangle, patterns interest me and intrigue me, if not necessarily the entire Zentangle method, but I do like a lot of the patterns that are there and um, ones perhaps I haven't seen around and about as well in terms of architecture and, and whatnot. So you're all very welcome here and my aim here is to inspire, to encourage, to suggest ways of doing things or things to try out. I'm not here to tell you this is the only way or this is the correct way, this is my way. If you take something from it and it aids you in your art, brilliant. And I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's subscribed. You mean so much to me. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And please, if you haven't rung the bell, the notifications bell, please do, because I'm trying to settle into a, find a new pattern, a new rhythm of creating videos, because a couple of things have changed in life. And so until things settle down, that notification button will let you know that I've released a video. And of course, all of this is completely free. It's completely free to do. It costs you absolutely nothing. The other thing I'd like to say thank you for are all the thumbs up for videos. That means so much. And also for all the lovely comments that are left. And especially where you've given me a shout out, my videos a shout out, my art a shout out, and you've shared and tagged me in what you've been inspired to create so I can see what you're doing, how I've influenced you in a, hopefully in a positive way. And that can be sort of like, I don't like what you're doing, but it's made me believe that I like what I do. And that's perfectly fine because we are all different. It's just that we need to be pleasant about it, really, as much. Well, within reason, there are some things, but I'm not going there. It's art. So let me give you a quick catch up on this, because this was the drawing I started in my last video. I'd printed out the quote and the border around it because I'm frustrated with my hand lettering again. And it may be this is this is the way I go. I might use some hand lettering from time to time, but I'm not really sure at the moment. Um, it'll be something I keep going back to and trying with. I like the letters I've been doing. I like certain things I do with letters and monograms and monograms may be my thing. We'll see. And there's no harm in that. But I also love whimsy and this quote just asked for some whimsy and fun and silly things like tentacles and monsters. So I have added more to it. There's these motifs and these ones here are new in this, as well as the little seeds or eyes, depending on how you view them. Um, I, I quite like them size. I'm quite tempted actually to put little spiky bits or fluffy bits around the outside. So perhaps they look a little bit like one eyed such sprites. Um, I, such sprites are from My Neighbour Totoro, a Studio Ghibli Ghibli film. Absolutely love it. So it's things like that are going to creep in as I watch more of those films, you know this. But that's inspiration as well. Oh, the fungus is as well. But I've also um, added more um, textural lines, shading lines on the tentacles to bring out that highlight more. And um, the same here as well. I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do that with these or with these, but I'll get there. Um, but I'm not going to do any work on this with you today. This is, this will just be more of the same and I'll show you when I finished and then how I decide if and how I'm, I'm going to add colour. I will add colour, but I'm not sure whether I'll do it with traditional media. But I'm going to finish it first, scan it in and then decide. So there's that. The other thing, I had a lovely visit yesterday with my friend who I saw a, a couple of weeks back. So it may become a fairly regular thing on a Friday. So Fridays, you may not see videos coming out. And that's why things are a bit disjointed, but we'll see what happens. Um, if, if I can get myself organized, I might be able to do a couple of videos a day and have a bank of them to release, which will be quite fun. Um, I'll have them to draw upon as and when needed. But when I got home fairly late yesterday evening, it was, it was after 10 o'clock at night, these had been posted through the door, wrapped. I'd ordered them a couple of days back. And these are last year's 
new Distress Ink colours, but in the mini form. Um, I only buy the minis now because A, storage space, and B, they, they, work, they, they, do, they work for me. What can I say? And when they start to run out, I will buy the reinkers for them um, as I need them. Um, I've actually got reinkers for most of the colours up to these. And sometimes I'll put a little spot of them in a palette and use them like watercolour. I haven't done that for a long while. But these are new, so I thought I'd have a look at them with you because they're new to me. And I want to make some coloured paper because I have here lots of pieces of, this is the Sea White All Media paper that I've cut out um, and I've rounded the corners. You see that? Nice round corners. How did I do that? I used one of these. They're corner rounders. Put it in here, press it down and it turns the corner from sharp to round. There's one on the other side as well. If you put it in the other side and butt the, butt the page up in there, instead of taking rounding the corner this way it sort of like takes a bite out of the corner so you get a, like a, a semicircle or an arc of a circle in there but I wanted rounded corners why I was watching a video last night as I was settling down um, I think it was Tracy Fox creative and she was showing how she made she's making lots of ephemera very cheaply because like everybody we're all looking at a looming cost of living crisis one way or another and uh, may not be able to afford everything that we'd like so this may be my last purchase of brand new things for a little while I don't know but I'm happy because I mean I've got so many distress inks it's a bit ridiculous but so I've got some well they were new pieces of cut and dry foam I've used some of them because silly me forgot to clip my microphone to my lapel and I'd recorded two videos because the door had gone and it was the postman delivering a package and um, so I'm starting over because <laughs> all you'd have got was fan noise and noise from my computer no doubt. It's rather warm here. So I have done two pages. This one is now dried. So this one I'd, this one I'd done. I will do another one of these. This is the um, lovely this lovely greeny blue color um it's called dear goodness somebody's alarm going off honestly people saturday morning um it's called salvage patina and it does remind me of that kind of greeny patina that you get um on copper verdigris is its is its name and it does remind me of that this is prize ribbon which is a lovely blue it's it's a blue, uh, these aren't in the palette and they, they do fill a nice space. It's not too dark, but it's dark enough. And so I just use cut and dry foam to blend them because I knew these two would go together nicely. And um, I gave this then a little spray of water. So I've got fairly big water drops. Picked the water up with a paper towel and left it to dry. I have got stenciling to do on that. This one... I've only used this colour on it, which is saltwater taffy. Um, the fourth, po fourth um, ink colour here is Villainous Potion. Lovely name. But I don't think these two will go. This is a bit too orange, and I think it might make a little bit of a mud with that. And I'm not sure about the, you know, it's a bit too orangey pat salmony for the blue and the green, perhaps. So I'm just going to have a look in my Distress Ink storage. And let me have a look and see what colours. I think I might. I've got some oranges and yellows here. I'm going to have to have a rearrange of my colours again and shift some things around so I can make spaces for these to go in. I didn't buy another tin because I know I've got enough spaces in my tins for these. Okay, so I think I may go with wild honey with this because I, th I think that will make a lovely colour combination actually. So let me just pick some of that up and just clean my, um, where's my, I've got a piece of, I've got a piece of kitchen towel here so that I can keep my, my fingers off this so I don't pick the colour up and leave fingerprints. Ooh, sun, sunset or sunrise. 
that reminds me of. How lovely is that? That's really nice. Just a little bit more there. Okie dokes. I'll pop that back in. I'll close that back up. This one I think is the saltwater taffy and I just want to add just a little bit more perhaps around. Oh gosh, that's a lot more. In places just to bring the colour out, especially as I'm going to be adding a little spray of water or more like water droplets and around the edge there and I do like that Ooh, that has made me quite happy so I've got my a bottle here and I'm just trying to spray larger droplets on than you would I'm not going to leave these dry on there because it'll take forever so I'm just letting them sit for a little bit so they dissolve the distress ink underneath a piece of paper towel so I can pick up most of the water. The paper hasn't got too wet and then I've got this lovely bleach splotchy look. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll add some stenciling. Okay, I have another piece here and we're going to have a look at this villainous potion because the, um, oh look at that, there's a little bit of paper there from the paper cutter that didn't work, the corner rounder that didn't work very well. Ooh, that will work nicely with a, with the aged patina and I think it'll work really nicely with the, the blue one as well. Again, that's a, a purple that will sit nicely in the pinks and purples. I am going to add, oops, so throw that on the top, some of the um, prize ribbon to this, I think. And combining places. Um, I've got some roughness in blending here and to be honest with you that doesn't worry me at all because I'm going to be spraying this with water which I, I do want to do to um, break the colours up but I am going to use this one here perhaps unwisely putting this one down last as it's the lightest colour but I just want to add some in that space in the middle get this lovely grey greeny colour where the grey and the purple or this green and purple meet which I absolutely love just clean that up it's very light in the middle dark around the edge so let's do the same just a little spritz of water just let it sit there for a moment or two might need a little bit around there that'll be better doesn't need long because distress inks are really reactive with water. And this is something you can do with watercolours. You need, you know, um, you can do it while they're still damp and you can lift the colour up. You can't let them dry, really. This will happen with distress ink, whether it's been left for, you know, whether you do it straight away, if you leave it for days, weeks, months, years. Spray it, it reacts with water. So that's really, that's really rather lovely. I do like that. There we go. Okay, let's look for another piece or two here. I've got some squarish pieces. I've got some very strange shapes here. I think we'll have a look at, perhaps I will have a look at this saltwater taffy here. And I may make a very strange page here where I'm going to put this perhaps in places. And then we're going to use some of the others. Excuse my arm going across the screen all the time. Because actually, there's me saying, oh, it might make mud. It actually makes a nice colour. I don't know if you can see. I will add some more of the um, saltwater taffy. Because I now know that it works okay. Well, that's lifted some of the purple up. Oh, look at that. It makes this lovely colour around here. Oh, I'm very happy with that. See, my, my common sense says that, you know, orange, purple often make that bit of browniness. But here, it's actually making quite a nice sort of like um, vintagey kind of pinky purpley colour, which is 
That's definitely the pinky one. Okay, I'm going to add some of the the vintage the um, salvage patina here and see how that reacts. Well, there we are, flabbergasted am I. I think I just need to try things out and see what happens with these because that has worked really quite nicely. It's grungy as anything. <laughs> Grungier than I would have expected. And I do want to add just a bit of saltwater taffy here just to bring that colour back in. And I think I might do the same over here just to make sure I've got that colour lurking. I, that That is just, yeah, I'm so surprised. I haven't watched any videos with Tim Holtz and other people using these colours. Um, I'm often not that interested in everything that they do, I have to say. Which sounds a bit mean of me, but it's not mean. It's just that I know, I know the kinds of things that are done from the past. And although there might be new variations on it, then, you know, say I do my own thing, they do their own thing. And it doesn't mean it's bad or it's, it's not good or anything. It just means that, yeah, seen it before but the colours I haven't this is just so it's such a different colour combination and I think it may be my favourite so far I'm learning new tricks so let that all sit just for a moment paper towel to pick it all up including from the paper I'm blending on and I've got this you can see there's some water spots there just pick any water up that's on here that is just so so lovely now I could have made some color up with water and spattered color on here instead of just water and you'd have got color spots I'm just using water today I'm going to sneeze <coughs> excuse me okay I'm going to pop things away here I shall pop these to one side for a moment and I am going to dry these thoroughly with my heat gun and I will be, be back. Well there we go, that took a little bit longer than I expected. I'd lost the stencil I'd got out and I thought I'm sure I got a stencil out and I thought okay I'll have a look through the stencils for another one, I can't see what I've put it somewhere, can't see it. Then I remembered, after I found another stencil, that when I put the hot e heat gun on, it blew across this. It must have blown the stencil off. And I had a look in behind the, um, the glass craft mats I've got stacked beside my table here. It had gone behind one of them. So I now have two stencils. <laughs> so I've got this one, which I quite like, it's fun. And I've got this one, which is more ornate. But I'm not gonna cover the whole of the design with pattern but I do need some um, brushes that I can apply this with. These are sort of like ink brushes or makeup brushes actually they are um, and I bought mine with um, coloured handles so I can always see what colour I'm using or what they're used for so you, you know you don't get muck. Now I'm going, I think I'm going to use this on a couple and then some on the others. I have got some browns out because I do like browns for distressy stuff. But let's have a look at using some of the blue because the lovely thing about these brushes is that they, you can add as a really tiny amount of colour with them so you just get quite a subtle patterning. So I've got some there and there. So I'll put the lid back on that. I'm going to get rid of the cut and dry foams that I've used for these for now because they're going to end up in boxes where they've got their own. And I think for this one I may add some of the salvaged patina. So I've got this greenish brush here. That'll work quite nicely. Let's pick some of that up with it. And uh, I'm going to offset this just a little bit. So it hopefully will give some kind of shadowing, perhaps, or overlapping. Could do. So let's do that here. And see what happens. Well, perhaps not, but 
it's all fun and interesting and I may give that a little bit of a, uh, a spray with water in a moment just to soften that and um, we'll see not so fussed about that but it's okay because it's just a background this one I think I'd like to use the this um, salvage patina and just put some in, in a couple of places and then I can also add a little bit of the blue as well so I've got enough on my brushes just to do that so that's very subtle but you can hopefully you can see that there if you just check on this I think that's focused it but that's quite nice okay for these I'm going to use the other stencil I think so this one is just so lovely I think this may be, well, I don't know whether it is my favourite, but I really do like it. So I've got this salt water taffy, I've got a pink makeup brush, my pinks and so on, and I'm just going to use some of that through here. And I might just use it in a kind of strip. You can just see the subtleness there, it's just adding that extra bit of colour and texture there. I've, yeah, I've covered up some of the orange, but it shows through, so that's quite nice keep that one put that to one side for a moment and then this one I so want to use some of that purple on this I think it's so I'm so this, it's just so lovely and if I use this purple over where I've added the the pinky saltwater taffy it'll pick pick some of that color up and mix it and perhaps just a bit up. Oh gosh, this is the blue one. Oh, there we go. So we've got quite a lot in the corner there. Pick the wrong one up. It's okay though, it's all good. Blues and purples are fine together. So let's just have a bit of the purple just to bring that out just that little bit down there. So that's quite nice. Not sure if I've spoiled that or not, but it. As I often say, it is now, it is what it is, and I can always make more if I need to. So, my last step here ew, is I am going to give these another quick spray with water just to hopefully just over the stenciled areas so that I can just pick some of that colour up again, distress these that little bit more. Pop them to one side just to dry, and that has softened those stenciled areas just a little bit. This one doesn't need too much because it was very subtle anyway, but just to there. Here are these ones just again, it's over the stenciled, just to push that back just that little bit, and again. with this one as well and we'll just pick the water up and let them dry so again I'm going to hasten that drying process with um, the heat gun so I'll be back in a moment once I've done that okay so that's all dried and yes they are all a bit curled because that's the nature of paper and I'm quite happy with these, but I do want to give them an edge. I also took the time then, the opportunity then, just to um, organise the colours for my distress inks. So um, I have got the browns out and I am sort of tempted to use brown, but I'm also tempted not to. Um, I do like a nice edge on things, so perhaps I will use a brown. And I think uh, I've got browns, but I also have here somewhere. I did. I've had to put odd colours together because I am running out of spaces. I will need to buy a new tin eventually. Um, actually, I think hickory smoke. I think hickory smoke might look. Will it? We'll try it and see. Because the worst that happens is that I have to. Um, 
get another colour out to go over it. I've got some clean cut and dry foam here. I was getting irritated by all the pieces, not remembering which was which. Luckily I have a good stock of it. So all I'm doing is picking some up on my, um, from my thingy there. I did need, I did want this again because um, I'm doing it that way and there's not a lot showing up. So let's go like and do this. Oh, that gives a more distinct edge. Hickory smoke is sort of a warmish grey, I think. Whereas the pumice stone is more of a cooler grey, so I think it will actually go quite well with the most of these. And it's something a bit different because I've been using quite dark um, colours recently. So that's just added that nice edge. I'm going to do the same with all of them very quickly. I'm not fussing around with them. It's not meant to be perfect. It's just giving it that, as I say, that edge, that border, that define, it defines the inner space. Just that little bit. Like so. So it doesn't take long. It's a bit like watching somebody ink the outsides of pieces of paper. And if it ends up a bit uneven or darker in places, that's fine. Because these are grungy, they're not perfect. This one here is possibly my favourite one. I drove back last night into sunset and twilight and then full night. Was the, my journey was just over an hour home. And um, I was travelling west. I'd gone east from me. Gone over into England. And uh, across the Seven Estuary. And so travelling back was travelling west, and it was so lovely. Um, a bit blinding at times, but it was just so, so lovely. So there we are. So that's that done. Let me just pop all of these tins of Distress Ink away, and I'll be back with you momentarily. I'm not turning the video off and starting it again, because that's a recipe for confusion and disaster. Let me move this out the way. And go away there. I have here, this is my, it's very old, but it's a stamp scrubber, but I've sprayed some um, stamp cleaning fluid on it. And then I can just clean my cut and dry foam off and use it again. So I'm happy with that. So I have a number of these here. I do need some pens and I know that I forgot to bring some pens upstairs with me. But one other thing that I bought, because I'm intrigued, I, I, I like fine liners. And as much as I love the Unipins and the Sakura Microns and um, so on, I didn't realise that Molotov had created a set of black liners. Molotovs make the really fantastic things um, in terms of acrylic it paints and I didn't realise they did watercolour paint brushes and things and they're particularly loved by um, graffiti artists and things and others so I thought I'd have a look at their fine liners because I hadn't seen them before so they come you can buy them as one set where they have a chisel nib and a brush nib as well I think or two sets I couldn't find open stock I didn't look very hard but this set has got a 0 0.05, a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. And the other one has got a 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 and a 1. So as I often draw in 0 0.3 and 0 0.1, let's go with those. So they look very much like any other fine liner, really. They're sort of like reminiscent of the uni pins, but they're different. So here's the 03. The other thing I'll want, hopefully I've got one here somewhere. I have, I've got a pencil. So I'm just going to draw in my, my pencil border. It defines the space within which I want to work. It doesn't mean that I'll stay exactly in this space. It just means, it's just a reminder to me don't go up to the outside edge because I do have a habit of doing that otherwise. 
and the lines are a bit wobbly. I could have used a ruler, but I'm fine with that. So that's good. That, that works. That works for me. So let's have a look at what black ink on these look like. I'm heading towards my... Ooh, ooh those... Ooh, just opened my page and think, ooh, I like those. Um, to my visual reference, my d visual dictionary, my Zibaldoni, whatever you like to call it. My pattern journal. I still haven't settled on a name. I quite like Zibaldoni. And these, I think, are, this is a pattern, I think, that it's called Spoolies. And it starts with a circle and a line that comes from it. And if I zoom in a little bit, I know that me zooming in might be deadly. And then I think you, there's two ways of doing it. You can start here and go around and you meet this up here. So I've just extended that line a little bit so it goes up to the edge. And you just keep doing this. This way, or you could start this way and go around. It's whichever way you're comfortable in drawing it. Both ways end up with the same end result. Oh, I'm a bit wobbly today. I didn't actually do any art yesterday because it was up. Get everything packed that I was taking, get myself sorted, check email for anything that had to be answered and seen to and various other things and off. And um, I was too late back at night, too tired to even think about doing art. So this often happens when I'm I've missed a day as you think, oh, how can I how can I get out of practice so quickly? But it's essentially it's because you do. I'm also using new pens which have got a different grip to them. They really do. They they feel different. And um I also think this this mat that I've got underneath me has got a bit of a texture to it. It's not smooth, so that might not be the best, but and normally of a morning, I've already done some drawings, so. But I haven't today. But I'm going to work with this as it is. And in fact, these wibbly wobbly bits really make me think of diva dance. So let's make use of some of them and fill some of them in. And then that way it makes it look almost deliberate, doesn't it? So it's nice to be... It's nice to be back drawing. It's lovely to visit my friends, as I said. It's... Um, been a long two and a half three years for me where I've barely seen anybody except on zoom and often those sort of like chats and zooms aren't they're not very long and it's not quite the same you know being able to share a meal and or two and to you know put the world to rights and, and what have you Makes me realise that you know, sort of like self self contained, self reliant as I am, I still need people, and that's a bit of a shock to me actually. So yeah, so there we are. It looks a bit diva dancey and a bit wood like. Well, it is what it is today. So, <laughs> so let's draw another one, and perhaps I'll turn this one round this way and go like this. The idea is to create it as a circle. I really am having trouble today controlling my muscles here. I'll be fine. Part of me is thinking, yeah, oh, I wish I hadn't chosen this background to draw on. 
part of me is going, Angela, you know what colours you used? Stop fretting. I'll go, okay, okay. And I might make a note on the back. And even though I'll fix this in a sketchbook, I will make a note of the, the colours I used in, in all of them. So that if I want to use that colour combination, those... Um, everything like this again then I can these are very big ones now the pattern I've got in this book these are left open in the middle but I feel I just want to give them some weight and I also may very well do some diva dancey kind of things here and there just so it ties in with the other one a little bit. You know, I've overspilled there, so we'll create a little lump or bump there. This one's a bit bumpy, so let's smooth that one out. And here there can be one just there, I think. Here I think I can just get one in like that. And it just sort of like, it, it's not, I'm not very happy with it, but you don't know until you try, do you? So let's do another one. And perhaps do one up here. And this one. I'm definitely going to create this as if it's diva dance. Or I'm diva dancing around the bits here. It's rather nice to draw on paper that has been distressing, even as recently as this has. But, uh, and the, but the distress ink has sunk into the paper properly. Um, the heat tool really helps with that. Or heat gun. Heat tool is. It's a craft heat tool. Don't use a heat gun that's meant for do-it-yourself. You know, for stripping paint or whatever. You'd soon have a fire, I think, because they get incredibly hot. And this one gets to a fair temperature, but, you know, I haven't managed to set paper on fire with it, so. But a hairdryer works as well. So if you, you know, don't go out and buy anything special, a hairdryer will do the same job. It might take a little bit longer, but it will do exactly the same job. The only thing a hairdryer can't do is... It, it wouldn't cause um, embossing powders to melt. Embossing powders, you need to use a, an ink that stays sticky or wet for a while. And then you sprinkle the embossing powder on the wet or sticky ink, heat it with a heat tool, and the embossing powder melts and becomes solid and a raised line. And it's quite magical to watch. Um, sort of metallic embossing powders are quite matte and dull. But as you heat them and they melt, they become like, well, the silver ones look almost like mercury liquids, liquid quicksilver. And um, it really is quite a magical process to watch. But um, hair dryers just aren't hot enough to do that. Um, There's something I used when I was uh, experimenting with card making and things like that. But I also used to use it. Um, I've got a number of rather large drawings because I used um, oh, is it it's the Sakura? Um, is it Sakura glue? Do a glue pen. I'm not. Sure, can't remember what it's called. Quickie glue, I think it's called. And it's blue when it's damp and clear when it's dry. But when it's dry, it's still sticky. And so I used to draw with this pen, and the line is quite thick, and get so much of my design done, set the embossing powder, and carry on with the next bit. But adding the next layer of, in, in the next section of embossing powder, you had to be careful that you didn't overheat the one you'd already placed there. And I did it in bits, because otherwise I'd be sticking my hand in the glue, and we'd end up with stuff everywhere. And um, then I'd go back and fill in the spaces with colour, 
you get like these raised bits. It's a bit like um, stained glass, I suppose. And um, it was there was something just lovely about that. I particularly had a fondness for the copper one rather than gold and silver. But I haven't done that for a long time. So there we are, variations on spoolies. Ones that are, you know, sort of like Let's make it, see if we can make it look like diva dance. It sort of does, but that one is a proper diva dance. So I quite like that. Um, it's a bit different. I mean, I've, I'll be going off the edge of the paper, but I, I could do with a couple of lines around that that are a bit finer and, and whatnot. Okay. So this little section here, I could leave it as it is, but I think we might just fill it in. I'll put... An O3 line there. Going back with an O1. And I'm going to do some broken lines. Let's see if we can create gaps all over the place with these. We're going to end up creating something here that looks like really distressed, well-worn burlap, hopefully. I'm not saying I'm going to manage it, but let's have a look and see. The trick is not to pay attention to where the gaps in the lines are, in the vertical lines. It's just to leave gaps wherever. It's not overthink it, is what I think I'm trying to say. Just go with it. Okay, so that's quite nice. And what I'm going to do as well is I am going to go and I'm going to thicken these shapes to the left and the bottom. And this line down here, this line. Thicken this, as this is how I'm going to be adding that um, suggestion of shadow for now. So we've got those. So that's that's interesting and fun. I'm finding these pens quite awkward to hold. They feel that the grip is in a different place. Because I'm actually having to hold it a bit further away from the nib than I like to. And that may be, the, that may be contributing to my wibbly wobbly lines because I'm not holding the pen as I normally would or where I normally would. I'll just add a bit more these black areas in this one. Can make some of them thicker and denser perhaps than they are at the moment. Perhaps it'll look they'll look a bit more like the proper diva dance one. We've got those going on, which is quite nice. Okie doke, so we need something to go with this. I don't want to fill the whole. I don't think I want to fill the whole of this with spoolies. I could, I could, I could, but I think I'd like something that's a little bit different. So let's start with that kind of shape. So I'm bending upwards here, upwards here, and then in the opposite direction. Or you know, it's, it's still bending upwards, but at a slant, if that makes sense. And I am going to just fill this with. lines to get the sense of volume and then we're going to draw another one here I might put a line there here and there 
looks like I'm going to have to thicken this line a bit because I've made a bit of a pig's ear there. And then we have a look. Let's do one that goes here. I quite like this because even though there's some similarity between this pattern and these these spoolie things I've drawn over here, it's still it's still quite different because there's this. different kind of shape it's more of a well it's more like a weird tooth to be honest or a very spiky short and dumpy blade of grass or something but it's quite that contrast is really quite nice well I think so okay let's have a look here So I'm having them going in all kinds of directions, just to work in an interesting kind of way. That's like a shark's fin. You'll all be seeing like a sea of crazy sharks now. I've just worked it out. They're like shark's fins. Yeah, not intentionally. Perhaps one more here, so... They're also like the um, tops of a crescent moon, aren't they? So it could be stacks and stacks of crescent moons. Which is quite fun. And this one here, we need some weight there. It's a bit awkward there, and this one's a bit messy. There we go. That's quite nice. And then this one, it also reminds me of, or well, we can use it as the start of the um, swerve. The so swerve starts with a couple of repeats like this, but then you go off for the next one, there, and we'll I'm also moving my pen in the direction that's most difficult for me to draw smoothly, like this, and we'll. alternate them. I think I'm making up my own variation of swerve here, it has to be said, but that's okay. I'm quite happy to have these bed themselves together or weave themselves together as it were. I quite like this weaving thing. The difference here is that these lines remain roughly parallel whereas here they come together at a point, but essentially it's the same kind of way of working, sort of. So let's have an, one that goes back this way a little bit. Oh, I, have left, I haven't left the um, white dot, so we'll pop that there. That'll be fine. So let's have a look. How can we do this? <laughs> We're going to carry on doing this one for a little bit. And this one as well. And I've got that little space there, so I'm going to leave that one. And then for now, we'll go back to this one. And then there's this one. And I will do another one here. But I don't think I'm going to do any more down this way. And then this one. 
and then rather than do another repeat of this one I'll go up there not necessarily going to do much in the way of overlapping here You can decide how much you, you like to do as the patterns go along as well. And that's how you do swerve, because you double back this way on it, don't you? Of course you do, Angela. But I think it works no matter how you want to do it. Got some very messy line ends here. But I can... But it's fine. Let me just add perhaps a couple of these. So we'll go that way and perhaps we'll come back this way with a, another one just to fill some space in. But I'm not going to fill every available space in with this pattern. I'm going to leave some open spaces so I can go back and repeat that kind of woven pattern there. Should we do one? I think I'll do one that comes this way perhaps. I really could have done with um, using some washi tape or masking tape to stick this to a more solid piece of paper to keep it flat. Or put it underneath something heavy overnight to flatten it out. I am getting myself in a knot here with wobbly lines again. But we'll be alright. So that one goes that way. So we could go back this way or that way. Let's go back this way. And just get another one or down here perhaps that might grow. To the edge, perhaps, or towards the edge. So there, we've got all of those. And I think what I'm going to do, just to bring this to this to the edge here. is perhaps just do a couple more of these. Just to complete this in a nice way, I think. And again, I just need to do some in these lines. I don't think I'll be buying these fine liner pens again. I'm not, they don't sit right in my hand. They have, they're very light. So they don't have a lot of weight to them at all. And I don't like where the grip is. It's a bit too high up. But it, if, if that's your thing, then go for it. I mean, the ink in them is beautiful. It's very black. It's very opaque. It's water resistant. I've seen somebody use this somewhere, these pens somewhere. And um, it's supposed to be, well, it seems to be very water resistant, which is fantastic. It's what we want. And it's also chemical resistant, which means it'll work with alcohol markers nicely. So it's exactly what you need. Well, I need in a pen. But it doesn't feel right in my hand. So, But that is just a personal preference. I've got, I, 
The nibs feel nice and smooth. They don't make that kind of scratchy noise that microns can make. I don't know how long lasting they'll be, only time will tell as I use them, because I, I will use them until I wreck them. Not deliberately wreck them, but you know, just from use. But they do seem to work quite nicely. So, last jobby jobs is to fill in some of this space with the, the burlap. So, I'll use the O1 for that like I did on the other side. So we've got some kind of consistency going on here. The only thing I most probably won't do in this video, but while it's processing and uploading and processing or whatever, it can take a while, especially at the weekend, because I think the YouTube servers are busier at the weekend. Um, I'll, I'm going to add colour to this or shadow to this, but I think I'm going to use Distress Inks like watercolour paints to do that. And then I will post the result in the community section of YouTube for you to see. So if you want to view that in the community section, um, you do need to subscribe to my channel and I would be very appreciative if you subscribed because it's um, it helps out it helps YouTube's algorithm direct my videos towards other people who might like them but also makes the algorithm do a little bit more work for that so I'm absolutely, you know, I'm still astounded that I, I've got even a single viewer. Because my intent wasn't to get a lot, you know, tons and tons and tons of followers. And it was, it was just thought, hmm, I need to, I need to work out what makes me tick in art, what my thought processes are, because I can't explain it in words. But I need to speak it out. I need a reason to talk about this or somewhere to, somewhere to talk to. And um, I didn't particularly want to burden poor, long-suffering friends who can hear me wax lyrical about all kinds of things. But then it was during the pandemic I started this where um, it wasn't quite so easy to have those long, rambling conversations. For, for lots of reasons. So. Yeah. It's complex, isn't it? Oops, there we are. We're nearly done with the burlapping, or whatever you want to call it. This little bit needs to go there. Some here. I'm just doing it like a grid as a background more than anything else. I think I could have left this without it, mind you, but I started so I'll finish. And the fact that the grids are slightly different in each section, I don't mind. Because burlap, you know, or sacking can be a funny thing. Especially if it's worn and used. Places get stretched. In other places, threads get pushed together because the other ones have been stretched apart. Yeah. So this will work. Let's put that in there. Yeah. It's getting rather warm. I think we forecast for a bit of a heat wave here in the UK over the next few days. So that is oh, this area here as well. Just need some. So I'll zoom out once I've done this. Hopefully I'm still on camera. Oh, I think I've done pretty well here, possibly. 
I'll just double check I've caught all the little areas. I think I have. Yeah. So the last thing I need to do to when I add my initials, which I'm going to do like a little charm dangling there. And I'll zoom out if I can see what I'm doing. There we go. So you can see how big this paper is. What is it? It's about, oh, one, two, three, four, about five inches by one, two, three. Yeah, about three and three and a quarter by four and ne well, nearly five inches. So it's not a huge piece of paper, but it's, it's a little bit bigger than Zentangle tiles. But it's a nice size to work on. So I will, while, while everything is processing and what have you with the um, video, I'm going to, I must probably will actually watercolour in these to add, add sh some shadow. Um, or darker colours to, to help bring that out. Um, I won't show you that this time, but if you want to see that happen, drop a comment. Just say, I'd like to see you use Distress Inks as paints, because it's not just Distress Inks you can use as paints. Um, any water-soluble ink you can. If you've got ink pads from, if you've been a card maker or journaler or whatever, um, you may have some. Um, just let me know and I'll do that. But until then, Take care of yourselves. Thank you for joining me and find time to be creative. Ta-ra for now. Bye.